Today, we're doing IT Basics Command Prompt. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Zach with PC Simplest, and we are doing the IT Basics and the Command Prompt today. And if you've seen our IT Basics video before, we'll link to it, you'll know that one of the things that we talked about was learning the Command Prompt. So we are just going to go ahead and dive into the basics of the command prompt. And this is going to be a part one video because there are quite a few things that we can talk about, but we're just going to primarily focus on a couple things here today. So how do you get to the command prompt? Well, from your Windows computer, you can do your Windows key, hold on the Windows key and do press R and that'll pull up a run command. Or you can go into the bottom of your screen here and just type in CMD, and that works in Windows 7, Windows Vista. Um, if you have Windows XP, you'll go to Start Run, and then you'll just type in CMD. Again, you could also just do uh, Windows key R, and then type in CMD, and it'll also pull up a command prompt. All right, so now you'll notice that we have the command prompt up, which is basically a black box with white text on it. So basically what you can do is you can type in here and you're gonna type commands in here. This is basically, you are telling the computer what to do through the command prompt. You're giving it commands and it follows your commands based on what you're telling it to do. So some of the basic stuff that you need to go to know is as follows. The very first one that I think everybody should know is IP config. If you just type in IP config and you type enter, what's gonna come up is your IP address on your computer. So if you're using a wired or a wireless um, connection, it's gonna show ethernet adapter or it might say wireless adapter. So right here you can see that you have your IP uh, v4 address, your subnet and your default gateway. So basically this command prompt tells you what your IP address is, what subnet you're on and what default gateway you're connected to, right? So this is very useful information if you're in a business environment because one, you're getting the IP, the IP address and you may have different subnets in your work environment and you may have a different gateway that you're going out of um, depending on how that network is set up. So this is all very useful information. It may not make sense to you now, but just knowing how to get to this information, how to access it is very, very important. So that's one of the first things, but you can also do IP config and then space, and then you're gonna do backslash all. And this is gonna give you more options. So if you have a laptop with you or any kind of desktop or something that has wireless and the built-in ethernet, you're gonna have two options here. So um, basically here, it's just gonna run down a lot of different things here. We're gonna, here we go. We're Now we're at the top of this. Um, so it's, again, we're gonna get our, so we'll get our host name, we'll get some other information here that I'm not gonna cover too much of this stuff because a lot of the stuff you won't really need to know too often. But uh, here we go, here's our ethernet adapter, it tells you it's a Realtek PCI family controller. You have your physical address, which is your Mac address, which is also very important. Uh, DHCU enabled, yes, that's good to know. Um, let's see, we have, again, subnet, we have default gateway, we have DHCP server. So that's another one, that's a good one to know. And then here's more information, DNS servers. You know, this is basically all this stuff right here, stuff that you may need to know at some point. And it's very useful information because like I said, you may need it. If you have a wireless connection, instead of it saying ethernet adapter or ethernet adapter, ethernet two, it may say wireless adapter, ethernet two, ethernet three, whatever. And it's gonna have a different IP address, but a lot of the information should be roughly the same unless the work environment that you're in has their wireless set up differently. So you maybe you're going out a different uh, gateway or you're getting a di different B DHCP server for that IP. Like I said, really depends on how your environment is set up. So those are two things with the internet. Now we're gonna get into pinging and what is pinging? When you ping something, you are sending a basically a, a protocol off to whatever it is you're pinging and it's gonna reply back to you if it's on a network. If it's on your network, if it's out on the internet. For example, if you type in PIG and then space and we'll do www.pcsimplest.com for instance, it's going to send 
information to PCSimplest.com and it's going to relay it back to me and it's going to tell me, is it up, is it down, how long is it taking? 57 milliseconds, 71 milliseconds, 65 milliseconds. So it's, it sends these con, these two, these continuous pings in, a, in basically in four and then it stops. It says, okay, well, packet sent four, received four, lost zero. So basically what that tells me is it sent out four packets, it received four packets, so we know that it's up right now, right? So that's a very good thing to do. So in a work environment, you can ping a computer name. So, so anyway, I can ping PC1, and it's basically going to say, hey, this PC isn't on your network, like it can't be found. You know, you can do that with PC2. Whatever your computer names are, you can do that with. If you know the IP address, you can do ping um, 192.168.1.1. And you're going to get a reply from that because I know that 192.168.1.1 is my router, right? So I'm going to get a reply from that. You can use that in your work environment for any IP address that you know to make sure that it's up and running. That's, this kind of leads me into the next thing that's definitely a need to know thing because I do a lot of work at my actual job remotely, right? I use, we use Dameware where we remotely connect to computers and stuff like that. But when I restart a computer, I don't know when it's back up because it's restarting in Dameware. Obviously, it's not going to work when it's not the computer isn't connected to the internet, has no connection because it's restarting. So if you do a ping, and then we're going to use PC Simplest as, as an example again here, and you do P, ping, and then you do space, and whatever your IP address or your computer name, and then at the end of that, you do space, and then minus T, this is going to send a continuous ping to this whatever computer name, this website address, or this IP until you tell it to stop. So when you restart a computer, basically what's going to happen is it's going to, you're going to keep getting replies over and over and over and over again until that computer restarts. And then it's going to say destination host not re uh, available, can't be reached, whatever, or it's just not going to reply back. It's going to say request timed out. So you know if you keep getting request timed out, request timed out, or destination host unavailable, that computer is restarting. So you'll know once it comes back up and starts pinging again that that computer is back on the network. So when you restart it, that's how you can kind of track when this computer comes back up, right? So that's very a very, very useful feature. I use it all of the time at work when I'm working on machines and I need to reboot them because people don't like to reboot their computers. So I do it for them. Uh, but anyway, uh, another great thing here, if I wanted to stop this, you could just exit out of the command prompt, or you could do a control C from your keyboard, and it basically will stop whatever you have going that's continuous, right? So now, let's say we want to know how long a computer's been up, because again, this is another very important thing when you go out into the real world. You're going to, uh, a lot of the times you're going to say, hey, have you restarted your computer? And people are going to be like, yeah, I restarted. They probably logged off, and they think they restarted. You need to know how long that computer's been up because sometimes it's been up for days and that thing really needs to be rebooted so that it stops acting terrible. Happens, right? So in the command prompt, if you type in NET statistics, so net statistics, SRV, so that's net space statistics, I'm terrible at that, sorry, net space statistics space SRV and hit enter, What's going to happen here is it's going to give you a basically how long the computer's been up. And it's going to say, Statistic, statistics since 12-26-2015, 109 a.m. So this tells me that my computer has been up since 12-26-2015 at 1 o'clock in the morning. That's how long my computer's been on since then. So I turned my computer on at 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, December 26th. And it's been up since then, hasn't been down that's what this kind of gives you. And then here's a, a couple uh, other different things here. File, you know, there's a lot of this stuff you may not necessarily need. I always just base, go based off this, um, the top one here that tells me how long the computer's been on. So that's kind of another definitely useful tool by, uh, by all means. So these are basically what I wanted to go through in Command Prompt Basics Part 1. Um, we're probably going to have like a part two, part three. This video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, so we definitely need to split these up in a few different segments because I don't want to bomb you guys right away with a lot of information in super long videos. So if you found any of this information useful, maybe you already knew it and I apologize, but these are the basics that you should know getting into any type of work environment with the command prompt because 
maybe the cramp command prompt is a little bit old, but it's still widely used for many different things. And in part two, we're going to show you a couple different things. In part three, we'll go into more advanced things with the command prompt and how maybe the command prompt can help you with your MDT deployments. That's Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Love it. It's amazing. We'll get into that. That's a more advanced tool that we'll talk about. Um, but anyway, you have comments, questions, concerns, please let me know. Leave a comment below. If you haven't already, go over to 3D Print Bros. I do 3D printing. I uh, will send a link to that, but that's where all my 3D printing stuff is at. Check it out. I greatly appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Thank you.